Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to episode 188 of the Stone Age Gamer Podcast for the week of February 9th, 2018. I am Chris Randazzo and joining me tonight is well-oiled Marine Dan Ryan. <laughs> Inside joke. I love it. Watch Grace and Frankie. It's brilliant. <laughs> and our returning guest, painter of squares, square painter, a.k.a. Adam Schub. Hi. No inside jokes there. That's, That's right. You're not a well-oiled <laughs> marine, Adam. I mean, we we could make that happen. Like, <laughs> could I'm, we? I'm Were you a marine? What? No, no, oh, okay. no. But he is in Philly, where there's plenty of Crisco on, like the. Yeah, they were oiling up the, is, uh, yeah. lo- lubing up the, the telephone poles. But yeah. morons still managed to climb them. Not in my neighborhood, though. <laughs> That, Just the, smart people climbed them in your neighborhood. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. No, West West <laughs> Philly isn't wasn't that crazy. I mean, people were were driving around, honking their horns and yelling and screaming and lighting off fireworks. But <coughs> all, all the uh, all the craziness uh, was Center City and South Philly. Gotcha. Yep. Well, Adam is here to continue our Creators Month by talking about his paintings, his YouTube videos, and some other topics in the world of gaming, like the Twin Galaxies controversy that we <sighs> are. I got, I got to talk about my own stuff again. Ah, a little yeah. bit. Look. Okay. But before we go any further, here's your weekly reminder that you can email us at mail at geekade.com. Just include the word Stone Age Gamer in the subject line. You can let us know what you think of our show, what topics you would like us to discuss in the future, or just say hello, because we always want to hear from you, the listener. So, uh, boy, we have so much so much fun stuff to talk about tonight. And uh, I don't know about you, Dan, but I, 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 I have you been playing a lot of games? Because I have so many things to talk about. I think we're just going to have to do an entire What We've Been Playing episode sometime in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, we're we're gonna need to uh, to push that for a week because I have things to say about uh, uh, the new Katamari game, the Endless Runner that I just downloaded. I don't know if it's new, but I just downloaded it. Um, <laughs> it's awesome, amazing Katamari, um, and Dragon Ball Fighter Z, which is possibly the most gorgeous game that I've ever played. No, I've yeah, heard well, nothing but good things about it. It's well, uh, well, oh my god, it looks so good. Like, and I'm f- so bad. I suck so bad at that game. <laughs> Because, like, there, there are people that I assume don't have jobs, um, which is how they've been able to log so many hours. Because, like, you can go on and look in the, in the leaderboards, and um, it, it will show you the total time that these people have played. And it's, it's years at this point that people have played somehow, <laughs> and I don't really see how that's possible. But, like... What? The game's been out for, what, like two weeks, maybe? It, there are people that have taken maybe a three-hour break in those two weeks. Like, it, it's just insane. Um, but it just plays so well. And fucking Tien is so badass in this game. Yes, that's what I like to hear. Oh, it's he's so good. He's, he's my, so he's good. He's my favorite character. He's my favorite Dragon Ball character. I am uh, I am currently running a team of uh, Majin Buu, Hit, and Tien. And um, boy, what a combo! <laughs> it's so good. Hit is really cool in the game, and I like I know nothing about Hit. Um, he's really cool. Beerus is really cool. Like, but there's there's a lot to say about it. Shadow of the Colossus came out today. Um, there's stuff to say about that. Uh, we need we need a whole show. Yeah, we do need a whole show because I've got tons to say about yeah. Celeste. I, and uh, I never played the original. I know. Go ahead and yell. I know how good it what, is. Shadow of the Colossus. I never played the original. I watched my roommate in college play it. I know how amazing and good the game is, and how much I'd love it. And yes, the remake looks friggin' incredible. I, it does. I, the, the remake looks like I imagined it looking when I was playing it on PS2. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like there, there have been people posting screenshots of it all day. Obviously, because today, uh, as we're recording, because we record on Tuesdays now, um, it it came out today. So people have been putting, you know, like this game looks amazing on the PS4 Pro, and holy shit, does that? Yeah, game I look can imagine on the Pro. So I will be getting that uh, Friday because I'm poor, um, and Friday's payday. So. You know, there you go. But oh god, well, it looks just gorgeous. Yeah, uh, I can't wait. I can't. All, wait. all my all my Magfest money uh, is going to like bills and adult stuff. So I yeah, I don't even have cool. like a lot of fun money from that. I wanted to get a Switch. I still haven't gotten one. So I I have so, a lot to catch up on. I, I've been I've been uh, there's been a lot of games on sale on Steam. So I've been catching mm-hmm. up on a lot of older stuff. Nice. Yeah, I was just watching a trailer uh, earlier today for a game I never heard of called Dandara. 
Yeah. But, uh-huh. um, boy, that game looks freaking crazy. Uh, yeah, you're like I, this d- girl, and you can uh, – you, gravity doesn't necessarily affect you, but you, it's a platformer, but you don't walk. It's just all about you doing these, like, straight line, uh, s- uh, light, line of sight dash moves um, uh-huh. from point A to point B. And it's like kind of a shooter platformer, and the whole world keeps rotating around because you can stick to any flat surface. It's pretty crazy looking. And I'm looking at this like, oh, cool, this is out today. I downloaded Celeste like four days ago, and I <laughs> freaking love it. I'm nowhere near done that. So Wait. Was that the you posted? Uh, it's it's like two D pixel art. You posted something on yes, Facebook. that was that was Celeste. yeah yeah. That that I was just is, oh that game. Is I watched about thirty it. seconds it. of it. Like yeah, you're you're talking my language. It looks really good. So yeah, I that I've looks been very very cool. I uh, I went back and I revisited Max Payne three because I kind of played that when it first <laughs> came out, and my god, is that game awesome? Like so goddamn good. <laughs> And I'm going back and playing it on hard mode. I'm unlocking like everything else. And I, I've been a lot of people have been saying, "Oh, you should just stream. You should stream on YouTube through your Square Painter channel." So that's probably going to be, be the first game that I do because like I'm so locked into that right now. I love Max Payne three so much. And I also just picked up Watch Dogs two, which is a lot more fun than I thought it would be. I really liked the first one. Yeah, the first one was was all right. I didn't finish it. This one is a lot. Uh, it's just a lot more polished, and uh, yeah, there's the a lot fir- more to do. The first one had a lot of really good ideas that it was like, <laughs> um, you're not quite ready yet. But you have exactly. to have a launch title out. I get it. Right. Um, I never got around to playing the second one because there's just so much other yep. stuff to do. Like today I, on uh, PS Plus games for the month, like Knack, which I don't really care that much about. Like I'll play it with mm. the kids. Um, but that game Rhyme came out um and Ryan was oh, like yeah. that, that really cool like almost cell shaded looking um very like like a painted cartoon that kind of looks like Zelda but it, you know in that sort of spirit but it's like a puzzle solving game for the most part like that was a free game this is so fuck I got that to play too that now sounds like a lot of fun yeah I'll just throw really out one awesome. <laughs> One thing with the what I've been playing, I've been playing ukulele with my son, and I was joking that the game is just so chock full of puns, it's ridiculous. And this one in particular, just uh, to Dan, <laughs> there's a, a sentient minecart named Kartos, the god of ore. That's oh awesome. god, <laughs> oh That's god, so awesome. <laughs> I like that a lot. <sighs> god of like, looks I'm awesome. I'm never gonna play it. I'm never gonna play that game. Yeah. But we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk more about it later. Which I had to get. We, we all had to get a little bit off of our chest there. So let's uh, which, back back to the. No, go ahead. But wait, you, is ukulele <laughs> the uh, the the Jontron debacle? I mean, we'll, we're we're not going to talk about that tonight. But was that? Yeah, he yeah, he yeah. lent a voice to that game and was like, "Here's the thing. There's no voice acting in ukulele. It's all." <laughs> <laughs> like it's okay. it's all gibberish so apparently right. he recorded like four lines of gibberish and then after the controversy with him came out they removed him from the game like okay so we didn't get to hear john tron grunt for four seconds <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh boy anyway oh. moving on, Hold yeah, on moving wait. On. there is one more important thing yes with the next ps4 software update we will finally Almost four years into the system, when you look through your library of purchase things, you're finally going to be able to hide certain purchases. So I can take off the beta that I played of Destiny fucking three years ago out of my library. <laughs> I'm really excited about it. All right. It's such a nonsense feature that it hasn't been included yet. Really? I, I've i barely bought anything off the PlayStation Store. Like... I, uh, Manhunt for PS2 is one of my favorite games ever. I love it was, that game. Yeah, man, it was it's re-released. It's so ridiculous. Oh, it's it's fantastic. I love stealth games and just, you know, over-the-top gang <laughs> and murder. type stuff. Who doesn't? And murder. Yeah, it just... Uh, gratuitous violence in games kind of turns me off unless it kind of works with mm-hmm. the game. And Manhunt does that perfectly. And this is probably the fifth or sixth time I've I've bought this game. And it's it's still so good. It's it's the different like the first manhunt is is like tongue in cheek and there's a certain amount of dark humor to it, whereas the second manhunt is just uncomfortable. Like manhunt two is like oh you guys got too real man like this is just 
this is now just a murder simulator, and that's not well, the, fucking the, fun at all. The first one, as you really get into the game, gets gets really fucked up. The, the second one, my problem with it was you got guns way too early, and yeah. there was just ammo laying around, and it essentially just became a third-person shooter, and there was no fear to it. The first one, you're constantly afraid. You're constantly being hunted. You know, you're always overpowered, outnumbered, and the guys are always like better armed than you. There's always a sense of fear in Manhunt 2. It, it just wasn't scary to me. Plus it didn't have the pig guy at the end. So. Yeah, it didn't have Pigsy with uh with his yeah. dick hanging out and yeah, a chainsaw. So, uh, That's what every game needs. If and if it was on the Wii. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Imagine that. That was such a weird choice. Mm-hmm. Like, we're, was. Making, we're making Manhunt 2. Cool, is it coming to PS3 and 360? Nope, Wii and PS2. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You do you Rockstar know? was like neck deep in making GTA 4 at the time, so it, it was a mm-hmm. very weird time for them to even make that game. I'm surprised State of the Union 2, or State of Emergency 2, wasn't a fucking Wii U exclusive. <sighs> yeah, oh god, they made a sequel to that game. they made a sequel to that, Jesus Christ. I remember getting that after GTA 3 came out, being so excited, and... Like, you within, and everyone else, yeah. and that, that oh, game sold was, so, so terrible. well. And it's terrible. It was so bad. <laughs> it's everyone was coming back like, man, this game sucks. Yeah. I thought this was going to be the next GTA. Like, just because it's made by the same developer doesn't mean it's the same game. Well, it was, come on, it was 2001. <laughs> we really had no frame of reference back then. <laughs> there was, it, it is still an impressive amount of characters on screen. Yes, that, that was the big thing that it boasted. I remember that there was just an I, insane amount of people running around, but it was just all, it was all fluff, surface stuff. There was no depth to the game whatsoever. I mean, if you, in Mega Man 2, if it was you and a big old fucking fish and four pellets, the game broke. So, the fact that there were 9,000 people on screen, you know, only a couple years later was relatively impressive. Yeah. Still a horrible game, though. Yeah, Mega Man 2 has a lot more depth than uh, State of Emergency. <laughs> really and Mega Man 2 is a two-dimensional game. That's true. It is. Uh, it is. Was, I'm hilarious. Was, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Depth humor. Uh, so I have a Mega Man Adam, two pla- Adam, uh, painting planned. I, I have a two foot yeah. square canvas, and uh, I'm gonna do uh, a boss fight from it that I've been wanting to do for a long time. On that, so I'm excited about it. Ah, so yeah. so I, I, that's a good segue to, in case anybody doesn't know who you are and what you do, why don't you okay. tell us a little bit about the square <sighs> painter? Who is Adam? <laughs> who is me? Who is me? I uh, I paint, I recreate scenes from our childhood, from uh, everything from uh, 8-bit Nintendo, Sega Master System, uh, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. I recreate them in uh, scenes on canvas uh, in pixels. So I draw a grid out on a canvas first and paint little squares so it looks uh, digitized but also hand-painted. And I also I put everything together in Photoshop first, so it it's like a conducive design. I, I reconstruct everything. So it's not like an exact screenshot of the game. I kind of make it like a scene from the game or something we remember. Yeah, like you recently did a, a DuckTales one that you, you know, yep. I'm looking at on your Facebook page, and it's got them all lined up. And that kind of stuff's cool because you wouldn't see that in the. Nope. You, you wouldn't uh, see a lot of these things in the original games. And uh, those recreations are pretty freaking cool. I appreciate it. I'm going to be doing a lot more of that. Well, that is mighty exciting. You said you had a uh, Mega Man 2 thing. Uh, in the works. What else? What else do you have cooking? Anything else you'd like to share? Um, I have a possible Maniac Mansion piece because that's nice. one of my favorite games on the system, and I just want to paint it. Uh, I have a Metal Gear Solid piece. If you guys looked on my Twitter, I posted that when it was half done. I did. Uh, I did see that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, that one is one that I did a very long time ago, like a huge monster, like four foot by two foot, and that was before I really like, had my my technique down. It, it wasn't very good. So this one is done in a, a different style with much smaller pixels on a much smaller canvas. And it just it looks a lot cleaner and the crop is different. And I'm looking at it right now. It just it needs a little more touch ups and it'll be done tomorrow. I'm very happy about nice. that. And then I also have a uh, a twelve by sixteen uh Friday the thirteenth piece that I tweaked a little bit. I did some uh custom uh sprite edits and happy about that one too. So can't wait to finish that. I'm still waiting for the uh my hero. <laughs> do, 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 do. That That's was the little so thing that played good. when you got killed, right? It's so yeah. good. Was that a packing game for the Master System? Because when I got my Master System when I was a kid, that was the first game I had. 
I don't hmm. know if it was a pack in, but I had it. And, uh -huh. and it it very well might have been. I don't know. Yeah, it might have been at some point on the but card, right? Ended up yeah, it was a card it. game, it was and card, it's actually yeah. like all the all the Hue card game. Are they called Hue cards on there, or is just that Turbo Graphics? Uh, they're the Sega Mega cards. Anyway, yeah. I don't okay. know what they're technically me, called, yeah. but I know. I, I know all, the... all of those are are kind of hard to find now. The the uh, the card games, they're they're all you know kind of. I mean, Master System is gone from <laughs> value anyway, but you don't see the the card ones too much. Uh, my favorite card one was uh, Transbot, that side-scrolling shooter. You ever oh, play that, that one? Oh, that was so good. Right? Transbot ruled. Me and my dad used to play that all the time. Trans and uh, if I'm thinking of the right one, like, your your ship would change, like, from, like, a side-scrolling, like, like a... Ship to a... Ro like a transformer. To a big fucking robot, right? Yeah. Yeah, there were these yes. little, like, uh, like, trucks with treads that would come along the ground, and you'd blow them up, and there would be, like, a, yes. a question mark bubble, and you would touch that, and then this meter would run between, like, between, like, A through F, and whenever you stopped it on, it would change, like, your ship, or it would change your ship into a robot, depending on what you landed on. Oh, so good. Yeah, it was so much fun. You had to get it on D, though, in the first area, and then when it would scroll to the next area, you would get this crater, and it would take you down into, like, some subterranean base I remember that was like the only way to like that was the way to play the game to progress through the levels. Yeah. Well, it, oh, I mean, it, uh, just a quick correction: it's just the Sega card, not the Sega okay. Mega card. Oh, okay. uh, I see. I see. There, the cartridges on a lot of the old ones are called the Mega cartridge. Mm -hmm. But like, I only have uh, Spy vs. Spy and My Hero on card, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm looking at the box now. It says <clears> the Sega card. That's all. Do you have um, the Monopoly cartridge that says Monopoly? Oh, I don't know. Do I have them? <laughs> I think no, all of I, I think right all from... of them have that that misprint. It's just mono yeah. space uppercase P poly. <laughs> it's really it's really funny. Yeah, no, I go right from missile defense 3D to my hero. So no, no uh, monopoly. Mm. Got to get that. No monopoly. Ever... I have <laughs> pole. I have pole posit posit positin or whatever. Positin. Yeah. Positin on uh, on Atari twenty six hundred. That's uh, yeah, pole <laughs> pository. <laughs> <laughs> Yucky. Ooh, hoo, hoo. I have uh, the the Wii Okami game with the IGN logo on it. That's that's pretty fantastic. <laughs> okay. Did you uh, ever Pulse see that one? The what? The Okami for Wii with the IGN logo. No. So 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 in the the first print run of Okami for the Wii, uh, somebody at Capcom was so lazy that they actually swiped artwork off IGN, and you can see the IGN watermark in the background art. <laughs> <laughs> the That's amazing. So you could actually send <laughs> in if if you were bothered by that, you could like Capcom did the whole thing. You could ask for replacement uh, artwork, and they sent three. I so I did because why the hell not? And they sent me three different uh, replacement cover arts for Okami, like just totally unique artwork. It's just really cool. That's One amazing. Of them was from Giant Bomb. One of them was from. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Imagine if Capcom gave a shit. Like nowadays, <laughs> about anything. That would be well, amazing. They, they spelled their own name wrong on one of their games, right? It was uh, Resident Evil Re Revlatians was mm -hmm. one of them. <laughs> I feel like I feel like they spelled Capcom wrong on one of their games. I got to look that up. <laughs> Who, who's worse, them or Konami these days? Like, oh, Konami, hands Konami down. Konami, least is... Capcom at least tries to make cool games yeah, from time to time. I... Yeah, I, like I don't you know, know, I don't like Street Fighter Five, but I appreciate the effort that's going into <laughs> Street Fighter Five. Now I, I can look at that and say they are trying to make a good game, and uh, I, I, <laughs> it doesn't like the Street Fighter like fighting community or like don't they just ignore Five? I think everybody still plays like Four for like competitively. No one cares about Five because it's so bad. I, I feel like there's like uh, I mean, obviously the tournaments like Evo and whatnot are, are focusing on five because they're more or less sponsored, I guess. But uh, I guess right, they there's, have to. There's yeah, there's definitely a uh, a contingent of of people, myself included, that vastly prefers four, and it, it breaks my heart because you know it's a new Street Fighter game. I want to want the hell out of well, it. Of course, but I just I, I prefer I, uh, I prefer Super Street Fighter two because that was the last one that I actually really sat down and played. <laughs> that one was that was the first one with like Fei Long and Cammy. Fei Long, Cammy, DJ, and T Hawk. T Hawk. Yeah. Yep. Oh boy, D DJ was... with his with his pants that said Maximum on the side yeah. for some reason. <laughs> well, they were supposed to say uh, what was it, Max Out or uh, no? No, it was supposed to be some other word, and they changed it because uh, the word wouldn't work when they reversed the sprite. So they had to find a word that was the same. Uh, when you cut that it in would half just mirror. And forward, I, I so see. They, ah. they changed it to Maximum. Ah, always, always learning things from you. <laughs> always learning. 
It was indeed uh, Resident Evil Revelations. Um, they uh, re- <laughs> they spelled C A P C P O M on the game. <laughs> wow, Capcom is spelled Capcom. This is so wonderful. <laughs> Wonder they they somebody did it on purpose. Some graphic designer there did it on purpose, and God bless him for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh god just the camp guys there's a guy who used to come into my old fun call and ask for marvel versus Campcom. <laughs> okay <Sorry>. camp <coughs> that complete non sequitur there just 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 made me i laugh. hope i met that guy at like digital <laughs> press at nava sometime <laughs> there was always I a cast so. of characters that would hang out there Oh, I miss going to digital press. Me too. Remember when I ran into you there? That's like I do. It was after I, I met you, mind. when I met you at that one show in, in Manhattan, and then like two years later. Yeah, it was a couple of years later, and I'm yeah. like, oh, that's a guy. It's, I love that it's, guy. That's 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 the guy. Yep. It's still, the guy. still doing still doing my my stupid shit. Ah, oh, your your stupid shit's amazing, man. I, 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 thanks, man. That I appreciate still it. could not believe that first time I saw your stuff. I'm I'm at that bar and we're there to try to like promote our band because we played there like at a regular gig. Right, that, right. What what was that place? What the hell was that place called? I don't remember. It was somewhere uh, in like Alphabet City. It was some shithole. Yeah, bar. it was. Um, <sighs> man, I wish I could remember. We played there every week for like six months. But uh, well, it was um, marine. No, 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 okay. <laughs> no, it wasn't well. <laughs> it but was, I, we were, it was, we're in there, and they're like, doing this art show, and my my lead singer in the band is like, "Chris, turn around." I'm like, "What?" It was what? I had and it like was that gorgeous ninja, scene from Ninja, ninja Gaiden. Yeah, I had the I'll get my revenge. I had the Jack Rio's Castle and um, the, yeah, Jack Rio's Castle. That was the one that I saw, and I was just like, Ugh. I I still have that picture somewhere. I just I yeah, I know with me like. With Drunk as shit, leaning against the wall. It's got my brother drove that night. That was my like second art show or third. I didn't know what I was doing back then. Wait, Chris, did you just admit that you took a picture of his pictures? I'm not paying you for your shit, but I'm gonna take a picture of it. <laughs> well, oh, I took a picture take of him. Photos of my picture. stuff all the time. That's fine. I'm, I don't care. I didn't <laughs> frame it. And put okay. it up on my yeah. <laughs> whatever. You want a low res like what were cameras like back then? Six yeah, megapixels. It was a, <laughs> it was wild yeah. cell. I think it was like a flip phone camera or something like that. It was something ridiculous. like that. Yeah. You were you weren't carrying your DSLR <laughs> around Brooklyn like a hipster. No, no. It was Manhattan. I was never cool enough to be. Oh, a, Manhattan. A hipster. Ugh. Yeah, it was yeah. in Manhattan. Nobody likes Manhattan. No, nah, even if you live there, you, you, nobody yeah. likes it. No one wants to be there. But that place was right near Katz's Deli, and I used to yes. love... Oh, it was like man. two blocks from there. Yeah, and you'd walk over there after shows and get, like, giant sandwiches. And Hell yeah. Man, my love of sandwiches knows no end. It really Yo, doesn't. there's Dude, there's, there's a place over here in West Philly called Koch's Deli, and... Oh, man, it's a little expensive. Like, if you, a regular sandwich is going to cost you, like, 13 or 14 bucks... But holy shit, some of the best sandwiches I've ever had. And the owner is a fucking weirdo whack job. You'll go in there and there'll maybe be like <laughs> one or two people in front of you. And you're still going to wait bare minimum a half hour to 45 minutes for your food. And if like you don't go right up to the counter and get in his face to order, he'll take other people in front of you. But like as he's making sandwiches, he like gives out slices of pickles or turkey or something like that. But... The guy just does not know how to run a business, so it's like you have to pay a little bit more money, <laughs> deal with his bullshit, and then you get an awesome sandwich at the end, and it's kind of worth it. I'll go through a lot to get an awesome sandwich. I'm not going to lie. All right. Well, if you're down here ever, we will we'll go to Koch's Deli, and you can experience the weirdness that it is and the amazing food you get at the end. I'm excited. So now you've been doing lately uh, s- some some pretty cool YouTube videos that I wanted to, to bring up. The... um. The emulate the shit out of these videos. You did an <laughs> NES one a few months back, and uh-huh. then you just did a Super Nintendo one, and and I I really liked those videos. I, really, I, thank I, you, thank I you. I've been those. I've been trying really hard with my YouTube channel to be uh, um, like more like uh, just putting out like more more frequency, you know, quicker turnaround. Not a video like every like three weeks, but people like those. I'm glad you like them. Well, the uh, I I noticed your your backdrop. You know, that's you moved recently, right? That was like last year, the year before. Or? Last year, about last uh, year. Yeah, July, July we moved. Yeah, I remember you talking about that, and then I remember the first YouTube video you did with that that backdrop of your fancy ass shelves back there. 
looking, uh, looking pretty pretty snazzy. Oh man, just just wait because that is just one corner of our living room slash game room, and we have like we have even a ton of stuff that we can't even put out of toys and shit like that because we just our apartment's not that big, but all of our games are out there. And we're gonna do a game room tour, so like we're, from oh, where I'm, I'm excited for that. From where I'm standing, like you could see the Super Nintendo games and like some boxed NES and some Genesis. Below me is uh, two shelves full of all my Nintendo games, and then to my right is all my boxed uh, Super Nintendo. And and then if you go even further to the right, I have this giant like six shelf like collector case that's like almost seven feet high. And Nina and I have. All of our like heavy hitter collector games in there. Nina's got all her crazy rare horror games. I have all my Nintendo and like rare Super Nintendo games in there. We have all these like you know rare toys and things like that. I have like like all like my really obscure uh, Star Wars figures in there. So yeah, can't wait to film that. I'm looking forward to doing that one of these days. It's gonna be. It's going to be a while before I get to actually put up shelves in uh-huh. here. I've been chronicling my my game room progress on uh, the Stone Age Gamer blog for a while now, but uh because my daughter is essentially the destroyer of worlds, any media that's on a shelf that she can reach will be destroyed. So I I'm not risking it with putting Holy, putting games up. Holy, you better put some bulletproof glass around those Super Nintendo and Genesis games you got. They're, you know what I'm going, talking about. They're not going up until she's old enough to okay. understand. Oh, I'm oh, not, okay. I will not do that. But what I did recently She's already have... eaten them. <laughs> Dude, I t- we were Karen talking the other cook- d- Yeah, go ahead. You have Haganai and Arrow Fighters complete in the box, right? I do. Jesus Christ, man. Like, Arrow Fighters now is, like, in the box. Like, they're in, in like, really good shape, right? The stupid good shape. Oh my god. You could easily easily two grand for Arrow Fighters, probably fifteen to seventeen hundred for Hagane. But if they're in like really, really minty shape, you could probably ask even more than that. Because the ones that I always see are a little beat up. Or Yeah, like, no, these are in ridiculously good shape. That collection was out of this world. The only thing the only <laughs> rare thing in that collection that was pretty beat up was a uh, Wild Arms. Uh, or sorry, uh-huh. not wild arms, wild guns, uh-huh. and uh, the 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 cart itself is in pretty good shape, but the uh, the the box was a little <clears throat> a little roughed up. But most of that stuff was in the just cart, like the cart loose is still. I mean, I think it's under two hundred now. It's two hundred or, or under. I like like I said in my Super Nintendo video, uh, I I don't even know what those games are going for these days. I just know that they're <laughs> rare and hard to find, but they're great and everybody should play them. So nobody yeah, ever. Nobody ever like that. That's why I wanted to make those videos is because nobody ever everyone always dances around the fact like, oh, you should play these games and find an alternate way. It's like, no, get a Super Nintendo emulator, get a SNES 9X or whatever the new one is and just download the ROM already. Don't yeah. pay what these games are going for nowadays. Just friggin yeah. play them. Play and like, Hagane. Yeah. It's fucking yes. awesome. Hagane is so good. I, I hate to disparage, you know, like going out and getting the cartridges, but the the, the collecting scene has gotten so toxic in, in a lot of these yep. situations. Like you were talking about um uh, another one of the things in your video, Demon's Crest. That was another one's one of the things I got from that collection. I never would have seen that cartridge had I not gotten that collection. But yep. you know, now I have a complete Demon's Crest, which is That's gorgeous and awesome. wonderful. But Oh man, I, I have I have my Demon's <laughs> Crest loose. I got that um <clears throat> from one of my friends, you guys know uh, Chris, DJ Cutman? Yeah. He got this immaculate set of games from one of his friends getting rid of stuff, and a Demon's Crest was in there. So he didn't want it, so he sold it to me for like half of what it was going for years ago. I gave him a really good hookup on one of my paintings a long time ago, so he did that for me. So Nice. Th- that, that's like the only way I'm, I'm ever going to acquire any of these really hard-to-find games. Either I, I've gotten some of those in like trades, people like, you know, hey, I have this rare game and I like one of your paintings, so I've done that. I got my Final Fight guy that way. There's no way oh. I would have paid money for that. So that's another. That's that's one that I'm looking for. Like I would love to have a Final Fight guy, but I'm not paying for it. I'd love to have Mega Man X3, but I'm not paying for it. Like I'd pay regular yeah. prices for that. But even even some of the other like lower tier stuff. Like I still don't have a copy of Contra Hardcore. I have the box, but I don't have the cartridge. And even is that, that is like, like fifty bucks now, probably. Something I don't like really that. know what Genesis goes for. Fifty. You know what? Fifty is not bad 
for Contra Hardcore for how much fun mm-hmm. that game is because you got like the four characters and the, the, there's all the different branching paths. That game is a lot of fun. It is. It's such a great game, but you know, I have it. I have ways to play it. Obviously, right, right. But I still want that cartridge. You know, it's one of the few Contra well, games I don't I don't own and. Uh, oh, crap, what was the other one? Oh, well, <laughs> you were there for, uh, was it two years ago when I missed out on that home improvement uh, for Super Nintendo complete in the box. <sighs> was I? Where was Where was that? Was that was too many games. That was that, that, um, that stand that was like, it was one of the tables was like right across from you. Yes. And uh, I was eyeing it up all day and then I kept passing on it and then uh, so I went back and decided, no, screw it. I'm going and buying that thing. It's a complete home improvement. When am I going to see that again? Never. You never it's see that complete. Stupid, stupid game for a stupid price. And I, 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 I decided I didn't care and so I went back for it and somebody else had bought it. Oh, it was, man, it what does that even go for complete? Like 100 bucks probably? Probably. It's, and they, were, they were asking 80 for it and that's, that's way not too bad. Much. It's so For much. A dumb, it's but it's such on. a dumb game. But you know, oh, me, I love awful. the absurd. You know, like I, I still want my, I still need a box of manual for my Michael Jordan cast in the Windy City. But. Hey, man! <laughs> I, whenever anybody says, "What's your favorite game?" Like that's my facetious go-to right there. <laughs> so I, I back that fully. Like I, I want to get. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you watched our pickup video for Magfest. I want to get. All the uh, Schwarzenegger NES games complete in box, so I understand oh. the silliness. I picked up a uh, Total Recall complete in box, which strangely enough, you don't see the box and manual for that too often. You see the cart all the time, but complete in box, I hardly ever see. Do you have RoboCop Terminator complete in the box for Super yeah. Nintendo with that sweet black, that sweet plastic. plastic box? Yeah, I have it from when I was a kid. Oh. I never got rid of that because that's <laughs> so awesome. I always wanted that one, dude. I have a ton. All my Super <laughs> Nintendo games from when I was a kid. I've told you, I never got rid of like yeah. you know my Earthbound, Secret of Mana, Secret of Evermore, Mega Man X two, X three. Uh, I think even Wild no Wild Guns was it? Maybe, but definitely X two and X three. I had when I was a kid. Never got rid of. So those are my originals. Wow, that's awesome! I didn't. Yeah. I, I only had X one when I was a kid. Right, right. And Everyone I have that one complete. X two came in that collection. I still don't have X three. I don't like X two all that much. Like Dan and I actually talked about that. We we did that on no. our um, summer series, and we they, we both did not like it. They, yeah, no, that game's terrible. I wouldn't say it's terrible. It's not nearly well. If you're comparing it I to would. Mega Man X, <laughs> Mega Man X yeah, is like did. a perfect. Okay, <laughs> it's a ten out of ten. I also have a lot of nostalgia for X two because I played the shit out of it when I was a kid. It's it's a it's a damn good game, but nowhere near the perfection of X. X three is where it really starts to go downhill, and they cram too much in there. The soundtrack is really good, but hmm. X three is it's it's not worth the. Two hundred plus dollars it's going for exactly, and I feel the same way about X. I, X is a freaking masterpiece. It's one oh, of yeah. the most incredible games I've ever played. I, I it's damn near flawless in every single respect. It's oh easily, game. I would say ten out of ten. One of the best games ever made. And trying to top that, try, try to follow, trying to follow that up with X two, especially when you think back to like the lineage of Mega Man games, like you know mm-hmm. Mega Man one, okay, Mega Man two. Oh, Yep. Yeah. So, all right, where where are we going with X two? And it's just like they they took it was just missing that soul. You know what I mean? It's just mm-hmm. missing that 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 chunk that made X so good. And even Maverick Hunter on PSP, I didn't care for because it's it's like how do you top perfection like that? You just don't. Right. You don't. You uh, don't. Screw I never with that. even played that on a PSP. I heard uh, the ones on PlayStation like X four. I heard is fun. I, I've never played any of those. I have no experience with them. But I've heard X four is all right. X five, I think, is okay. I could be wrong. <laughs> X six is terrible. That's what I've heard. X six and X seven. That like Kojima do, or uh, not Kojima. Sorry. Uh, what? Anafune. Uh, in, in, yeah, Inafune didn't want to do them anymore and was like, just fuck it. They're the Dragon yeah, Ball did. GT of Mega Man X. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He didn't They're, want to do them anymore, and it was obvious he didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah, like, it was oh, very obvious. Dude. You just I got to phone this in, dude. <laughs> I got to meet him at uh, at Magfest like two years ago. It was awesome. I mean, it was only for like thirty seconds, but I got a picture with with Inafune and with a uh, a big uh, painting of um, Proto Man behind me. Did you ask him what the hell happened with Mighty Number no. Nine? <laughs> no, I didn't, because uh, <laughs> you know you know Matt Papa, you know him from Inti Creates. I think I have met him. Yes. Yeah, he, Matt's one of my best friends. And uh, he was uh, Inafune's 
translator and Matt works for Inti Creates and that's like a really sore spot for him is, is Mighty Number no. 9 so I definitely did not bring that up <laughs> it's a sore spot for me too man yeah it, it is for all of us I, I, I briefly it played it and it's just uh, I wanted to love it I wanted to I did too and there's there's a the core of a good game in there there is there is I will say that I am currently playing uh, from time to time Mighty Gunvolt Burst which is oh, like those in, are so good, so yeah, good. That's that's a solid game right there. Yeah, that and um, Blaster Master Zero. I know you played. Oh that, my right? god, Blaster Master Zero right? is amazing. I'm up to the uh, like area eight or something, and like the mutant stomach or something like that. I think I'm at the end. I haven't beaten okay. it yet. Yeah, there's uh, there's eight area. There's nine areas total. Uh, are you playing okay. it on the the? Are you, if you get all the secrets, you get to area nine. All right, and, I'm, I'm um, playing on a uh, 3ds. Okay, yeah. If you get to all the secrets, you get to Area Nine, and you get like this totally tricked out version of your your uh, tank, which is amazing. Nice. I want them to make another one so badly because they completely nailed it with that game. Oh yeah, so did, absolutely. Did the 3ds get any of the weird uh, DLC characters? Oh yeah, with like Shovel Knight and Shantae. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually um, Matt Matt. Can't, when he uh, last year for Magfest, he always comes in to like you know because his family lives in Jersey, and uh, we were hanging out and we went out to dinner and he like I brought up uh, Blaster Master and we were talking about it and he's like you have to swear you won't say anything I'm like fine I won't say anything and so like I knew like two weeks before that Shovel Knight was going to be the new DLC character that was coming out and I was like freaking out because I love Shovel Knight so much. Shovel so, Knight's so great. And I'm thinking yeah, like it's, when they it's, announced that I was like, "Wait, how do you play so, Shovel Knight in Blaster It's great. It, it, it's cha- so it totally weird. changes the game. It does all the DLC characters completely change the way it plays, which was so smart. I loved that about it. I uh-huh. actually played through most of it a second time with uh, Gunvolt. But then they kept releasing DLC characters, so right, I'd stop right. playing with one and start again. I'll be like, right. and then by that point, the tidal wave of uh, Switch games was dropping, so I haven't really gone back to Blaster Master yet. But I, I would like to beat it again because I'm like daunted to now <laughs> even get a Switch because I want to get that and like the Pro Controller and obviously Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey. But then like a whole bunch of my friends have just been focusing like their YouTube channels on Switch and talking about all these amazing games just in the indie shop. That like yeah. each and every one of them are like home runs of how good they are. It's kind of crazy. Like I, I can't tell you the last time I've enjoyed a any video game system this much. Like yeah, that's what everyone's been saying. I honestly I have not cared about a Nintendo system like this since the Nintendo sixty four. Like well, when the Nintendo sixty four was first coming out, because I honestly hate that system. But yeah, I'm I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's like ma- games maybe, I like for it, but. Not how a many? Lot. How many? What? There's maybe 15 good games for that system, and that's kind of being like pretty, pretty liberal there. I mean, let's see. I actually own 65 and 64 games, which is kind which of funny. Is, how <laughs> many of those are racing games? <laughs> well, a lot of them are like three yeah, of them. Yeah, I right. have All Star Baseball 99 and 2000 just because oh. they were free. Okay. Uh, Asteroid Hyper 64 is pretty cool. All right, that that I'll give that. Banjo, uh, Beetle Adventure Racing is cool. Never that's got one of the Banjo few. Kazooie. Though, that's one well, of the few racing games that's awesome. It's Beetle Adventure Racing, kicks yeah. Ass. Beetle Adventure, yeah, that game's great. Uh, Blast Core is a really neat game. It's weird as hell. No, no, uh, it is. It's a very odd game. That was a launch title, and the the games that came out in the beginning, N sixty four started really, really strong, and it then did. they just got a glut of like third party crap and just shovelware on that system yeah. like cuz it was hell. impossible to develop for like yep. it it's was like so well weird. you could make make things for this on cartridges where you could make PlayStation games for a third of the price and exactly and and reach this audience you know like i'm i'm looking at Earthworm Jim 3D what a pile of garbage that is oh you know? my god Ugh. hybrid heaven terrible game um, that game was supposed to be good like that was hyped uh, what was the other one? Daikatana. That was the one that was hyped to like oh, holy yeah. hell. That was yeah, like, the was. worst game ever. But you know, then there's stuff like you know Mario Kart 64, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Killer Instinct Gold. Uh, Is that one good? I never played it. Killer Instinct okay, Gold. It's it's Ki2. It's, it's right. good. Yeah, it's pretty much the arcade Ki2 yeah. more or less. Like uh, some of the some of the ones that are kind of like they're shitty, but they're like that good playable kind of shitty. Like you, you ever mm-hmm. play Body Harvest? 
Yeah, I have Body Harvest. <laughs> yeah, that one, if you can get used to the crap factor controls, because like, Take-Two Interactive And the that. visuals. That game is yeah. so goddamn ugly. Oh, it is. Oh it's that God, disgusting. That well, I think the N64 graphics are ugly as shit anyway. With like I the completely muddy, agree. Stretched polygon look. Even back then, it looked like crap. I would take the PlayStation 1 graphics over the N64 any day. See, but, I, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence of like, I don't know which one I hate more. Because that whole generation, I have lots of disgust oh, abs- for. Oh, yeah. Well, it was the first of its kind, but the N64 is just... <sighs> ugh. It's oh, the only reason I have one in games in the collection is because just N- Nino wants wants N sixty four stuff. Otherwise, there's been so many times where I found shit at like the flea market, and it, like I paid twenty bucks for this N sixty four lot. It's trade fodder. I'm not. We're not keeping any of this crap. Like I paid money for it. It's getting flipped for something else. And that's the thing with N sixty four too. Is that a lot of it's. It, it, it collects a lot, you know. There's a large nostalgia for that system. Oh, which totally. Even it now. totally inflates some some crappy stuff. But if you look a little between the lines, like all right, there was the remake of Space Invaders for it, which was also on PlayStation. Uh-huh. Absolutely fantastic. If you haven't played that and you like Space Invaders, you've got to play that game. It's ridiculously Space Invaders fun. is a classic. It's like, you have to like that game. Yeah, this new version is so good. It's not as good as the Game Boy Color one, which came out at the same time, which is weird to say, but it's ridiculously good. Uh, it's the N64 has the best version of Dr. Mario. Hands down. It's got a really? four-player mode. It's got a single-player story mode. It's got all these characters you can choose from. It's got hand-drawn uh, animation for the little characters in the middle. It's it, Dr. Mario 64 is the best Dr. Mario. New wow. Tetris is amazing. Okay. Uh, d- two just s- totally fantastic puzzle games that are only on this and haven't been ported to anything. Like, Dr. Mario 64 and New Tetris did not show up on Virtual Console anywhere, and those games are absolutely stellar if you like puzzle, like, you know, block falling puzzle games like they're just oh, I, great I, I absolutely love like puzzle tetris attack is my favorite puzzle game but original tetris and dr mario i absolutely love mm-hmm. and even that um what is it the version of tetris attack on the 64 the pokemon puzzle league's pretty darn good yeah that crazy um oh it's got it's got this weird mode where instead of just playing in a regular well it's got a a like a tube so you spin the whole thing around so you're playing panel to pawn on like a, a rotating uh like a cylinder, Co- like a cylinder. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. All it's right. freaking crazy. Like, and I'm that not great nuts. at that. I'm not great at that to begin with. But yeah, that's that. Yeah, you know, if you can stand the Pokemon license, I'm not a huge Pokemon fan. It's very Pokemon cartoon more so than the games. Uh, uh-huh. But if you can stand that, it's a really good version of of uh, Puzzle League, All right. uh, Tetris Attack kind of stuff. All right. Really, you don't so like Pokemon? The new Pokemon games, but uh, Pokemon Y, I loved, and I'm playing through Pokemon Sun now. It's so much fun. It's so good. I am probably gonna uh, take another swing at it once I uh, once it comes out on Switch, the whatever uh-huh. version that is, because I'm sure that's going to be a big deal. Um, the oh I, yeah, I recently a couple of years back, made an attempt at getting into Pokemon and. I do dig the original Pokemon. I started with the, with Pokemon Blue, and I got most of the way through the game, I think. Uh-huh. But uh, I just kind of fell off because other things were, were, were coming yeah. out at the time. Did you play that originally in, like, 98, 99 when it came out? I did not. I was working uh, at right. Funko Land at the time. Uh-huh. And yeah, cause... Pff, I'm sorry, the go kids, ahead. The kids and the Pokemon cards... It oh. turned me off to that franchise completely. It right. just my, completely my brother, slaughtered. My brother was the perfect age for that because uh, he's he's 31. He's turning 32 soon. So let's see. I was 17 back then, so my brother was 13. He was the perfect age. And the way I got into it was my parents took us on vacation to Cancun. And on the plane, it's a long plane ride, my brother had Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue. He was playing through Blue, and I was, like, making fun of him about it. And he, the, the way he got me into it was he just looked at me. He's like, it's like Dragon Warrior, but instead of using weapons, you capture the monsters, and you use the monsters as your weapon. And I just looked at him like, what? Really? That's a pretty good way to sell that game. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> my brother at thirteen really told me that. Like, that's exactly how he said that to me. He's like, "It's like Dragon Warrior, but you use the monsters." <laughs> uh, like, okay, give me Pokemon Red, and I chose Bulbasaur, and I fell in love. Like, when I think back to that vacation, it's like it's synonymous with me playing Pokemon Red. Like, I played through that, and by the time we were taking like the plane ride home, I was up to like the Elite Four. So, I, huh. I completely I, I skipped over a lot of the other ones, but. 
Pokemon as a whole, I oh, I have a lot of respect for for that game and that whole uh, genre of games. I learned to give the a crap series. about it, and um, the really what 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 knocked me off my socks to begin with was the soundtrack. Um, oh, because here I was playing a Game Boy game I had never played before, and I'm listening to this wonderful soundtrack, uh-huh. all these great chip tunes that I had never never heard before. So it was, that was probably my the highlight of playing through that game for me. Oh, it's great. It is. Even even playing now, just it, it's still the game still I guess holds up. I haven't gone back and played the original ones on on Game Boy in a long time, but it just, does hold so up. Classic. I mean, I, I will say that it, it it definitely sucked me in from time to time. It was just mm-hmm. uh, you know came at a time when I didn't have a lot of time to play it and of course be, and other things were coming out that I'd be like, "Well, I'd, I I want to play this instead." And hey, it was it was a different time, you know. If, if that stuff starts getting ported to Switch, I'll probably go back and, and do it now because this, you know, since the Switch came out, I play more games because of the way that system works. So, yeah, yeah, it, it it's very conducive for that. My uh, my, one of my friends brought it to Magfest, and we had it hooked up in the hotel room, and it was it was awesome. Mm, good times. Yes, very much. All right. Uh, We're going to take ourselves a a quick break here, um, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the the Twin Galaxies situation and the high scores and all of our opinions on the things and and the whatnots and the the goings-on that have been happening there. So, you're listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from Geekade.com. Stick around. And now, here's a look at some of the other original content available right now at Geekade.com. First up, on You Shall Not Pass Go, this month, Jengiz does story speculation. Our heroes talk about Jengiz's new commander decks, and they go over MTG's newest set, Rivals of Ixalan. That sounds then, sexy. It really, like, you've obviously been to Ixalan. I know it's, all about Jengis's commander decks. Good thing we're staying in Ixalan, because Dave and Jengis talk about the newest MTG D&D supplement, a trio of subclasses in Unearthed Arcana, and they discuss the state of miniatures. I love supplements. I love miniatures. <laughs> I love miniature supplements. <laughs> in board games... <laughs> They review the Dresden Files cooperative (laughs) card game, and what do you mean? Finally, to round out this anniversary episode, they present the inaugural Dengue Awards. Are you curious who won? I know I sure as shit am. (laughs) Then check check out You Shall Not Pass Go, episode 24, (coughs) the Dengue Awards. Then, for our 50th Waveback episode, Matt and I... Well, my 50th Waveback episode. <laughs> Matt yeah. did not retroactively edit himself into the previous episodes. Matt and I decided to take a look at the music. Not listen to, but look at... <laughs> We're just looking at the sheet music. Fuck just looking podcast. at it. Uh, the iconic classic game and uh, its two most prolific remakes, Metroid 2 Return of Samus for Game Boy. Because the soundtracks of each are so short, we were able to listen to each in its entirety. That's not entirely true. Uh, in fact, that's blatantly false. Uh, I didn't write this. <laughs> we were not able to listen to each of them in their entirety, but we were able to take a nice selection of the proper musics of those games and compare and contrast them. So we listened to Metroid 2 Return of Samus, AM2R, and Metroid Samus Returns, and we compared all those tracks, and it was freaking awesome, and it was really long because it was our 50th episode, so we figured we'd, uh, we'd go long. So see how they all stack up to one another in uh, a wave back episode 50, Metroid 2 comparison. Finale. On an all-new episode of Dick. non-stop <laughs> <laughs> of non-stop comic shop, the guys take a look at two miniseries whose titles each feature. Are you are you sitting down? I'm sitting. Stand up. <laughs> Sit down again. Each feature the word "foe," Chris, and not "foe" like the noodles, which are amazing, which is so actually good. pronounced "pho." But then, like, it messes up all the, like, faux show noodle house. Like, it fucks the faux mm-hmm. show. Like, it's not. 
First up is uh, the lethal foes of Spider-Man, not to be confused with the deadly, fatal, unhealthy, or deleterious foes. It's an entertaining yet bloated scrum of a story where six bad guys too many fight over a pulse rifle from aliens. Then, we have Fantastic Four Foes, featuring snappy, engaging dialogue written by Robert the Talking Dead Kirkman, and some embarrassingly lazy copy-and-paste artwork from someone who strangely isn't Greg Land. Also, it stars special guest villains Sexy Iron Man, Jurassic Park Cash-In Man, Whatever Power He Needs Right Now Man, Cyborg Dead Husband Man, Nazi Made of Bees Man, The Iconoclast, and Madam Butterface. Bo, all this and more. You get it? Bo, all this and more. Download Nonstop Comic Shop Episode 15. Bo, your consideration, Chris. Look, I know Jordan listens to this, so Jordan, I'm, I'm very, I'm very disappointed that you didn't call it Fo Yo Consideration. Fo Yo. Fo Yo. Fo Show. Fro Yo. Froger is also good. Froger is also cursed. Froger, <laughs> but it comes with a free topping. <laughs> Woo! The topping is also cursed. Aww. <laughs> you can catch all these Simpsons quotes, plus tons of other articles, <laughs> videos, podcasts, and more right now at geekade.com. Oh, Simpsons did it. Okay, we are back, and we now know a lot about Texas. Well, at least I do. I know a lot more about Texas than I did a few minutes ago. All right, so... Well, well and we also learned last week with last week's special guest. That's true, yeah. Brett, Brett talked a lot about Texas. Texas. He is. Who? Who did cool you have dude. last week? We had Brett Weiss, uh, author of... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a really nice guy. I he's contributed a, to his yeah. Super Nintendo book for Final Fight 3. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, he's a really good dude. Oh, he is so a really good this, dude. This episode now then features all co-authors on the. Can it's we true. call? It, are we co-contributors? I don't know what we're. We're. we're I'm going to say co-contributors. That's a okay. lot of syllables. I like that. It is all right. Good. Because that is a lot will, of syllables. I did the clap in my head. In there. <laughs> did you? <laughs> co. All right, anyway, the, the, there's there's more than you think. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> we all just did that again. <laughs> God, it's a wonder nobody will sponsor us, Chris. <laughs> this is damn good entertainment, Dan. It really right? fucking is. This is this is damn good entertainment. I'm Ooh. I'm entertained. Yes, I'm thoroughly entertained. You know, you guys, you keep having me back, and you know, it's a good time. So, <laughs> so we can smell uh, our own. If we we can. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We all smell terrible. <laughs> well, speaking yeah. of smelling terrible, let's talk about what's going on over with with uh, with the the high scores. So th- this is a really fun and fascinating story. We're actually asked by a, a couple of different people to talk about this. Um, Ferg from the Atari Twenty Six Hundred Game by Game podcast asked if we were going to be talking about this, and I, I said we were. In fact, I, I asked him if he would come on and, and join us for this segment, but he's he's currently recording another podcast. Uh, with other people that aren't us, Ferb's, Ferg is a uh, Ferb. I was listening to Phineas <laughs> and Ferb earlier. The, uh-huh. the kids, I'm the Queen of Mars, the space launch today. My daughter wants to build a colony on Mars now and be the queen. It's awesome. Anyway, uh, Ferg is a busy man. Chris. He is a busy man. He's, He's very busy, very man. powerful man. Very busy, and, uh, very powerful. <laughs> Now we we love Ferg with all of our hearts and souls, and I'm sad that he couldn't be here because it would have been really fun to talk to him about this. I'm I'm curious what his his whole take on this this situation is. And we also got um, uh, Anthony Hom, another listener of our show, asked us to talk about this: the Todd Rogers fiasco with Twin Galaxies and all of its uh, related fallout, including the uh, the the wondrous long haired Billy Mitchell. So so the as the story goes. Um, Todd Rogers was a Guinness Book of World Record holder for like the oldest world record, uh, which is Enduro, well, not Enduro, um, Dragster. And uh, this world record started coming under dispute because, you know, it's the oldest uh, video game world record, so speedrunners want to try to beat it. And uh, 
it seems that uh, his world record is physically impossible. He is saying that uh, he said that he got 5.51 seconds on it, and according to every technical breakdown that anyone's been able to do, including a, a considerably long and fascinating Ben Heck breakdown, uh, where he like made a machine just to play dragster. <laughs> oh, God. If, if Ben Heck is on the case, it's like, okay... We will let him do his thing. He, yeah. he just he he will clear it all. Yeah. Well, he he concluded that the best possible score is a five point five seven. And right. Now there's there's some argument to that. Uh, you know, he was not actually playing it on a an Atari twenty six hundred on a CRT like in the absolute perfect old school settings. He was doing this you know technical thing. But I don't know. I trust Ben Heck. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, would. I, I, He's a legit guy. By by this many seconds, too. But what's fun about this is that if you look at his other scores, that's like, okay, well, all right, Dragster 5.57 to 5.51. Okay, if you don't know anything about you know technicalities and whatnot, you might think, wow, he just got lucky one time and did something crazy, right? Yeah. But if you look yeah, the, at his other others, scores... I, I, they're crazy. <laughs> absolute insanity. Like... So I have this I have this list of his his other scores that some of these are just so funny and this um well, I can, found this can I uh, can I throw in one thing before absolutely. you read these other scores because I feel it's important context to this story. Um, he submitted this score back in like the early eighties for Dragster. Right? That's true. Yeah, this is a very very um, good point. He never provided video recorded proof. Of the score, I thought it was uh, Polaroids back it was a Polaroid. then. That's, it yeah. that's what I remember because I'm I'm honestly I didn't follow a lot of the Twin Galaxy stuff, so this is just what I've been hearing from a lot of other people is that it was Polaroids were submitted back then. That was the like standard way that it, scores were captured. That other people would be there to witness it. A Polaroid was taken, and then it was submitted to Twin Galaxies. Yeah, and it was also was submitted to Activision. Like he, right. this was right. his world That's record right. with Activision, and even David Crane kind of stands behind it. Like, wow, look, this is just the way it is. But like, that's just it. David Crane, I'm sure he does not know. Well, I remember for sure if he programmed the game to make it so the 5.57 was the best you could possibly. Who's going to remember that? When did this I, game come out? 81, 80. Seriously, like, like it's it's not a it's not a recent thing, and but, but I think the only reason I bring that up is because I think it's important <laughs> context to to have somebody who's like, yeah, no, trust me, you know, and that's like, like where photo, a lot of this comes from. Yeah, can be like doctored a little bit. It's like the kid in school who like always had to one up you, of like, mm-hmm. oh, I got this thing. Oh yeah, I have two of them. Like, no, you fucking don't. Like, <laughs> shut up. Show me a picture. And a lot I of this can. stuff. Uh, I was reading through some of these articles. A lot of stuff wasn't supervised in any way, shape, or form. Like yeah. these things are just like he just could have just written them down. Because why the hell not, right? Mm-hmm. The, the, so, what you just said about the one the kid in school that always had to one up you—that's mm-hmm. kind of always how I felt about Twin Galaxies. Anyway, just from you know being a convention vendor guest, what have you, and meeting these guys, just you know peripherally. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt about these people but any anyway that that's just like my you know how how i would look at this but anyway continue it's it has always been at least to to my mind it's always been uh, more than a little intimidating and and not in more of a toxic way than a like boy i don't know if i can do this just more like these guys are very very proud of their scores and they and these kinds of things i feel has given some of these folks a false sense of uh like macho bravado and the, absolutely the handful of folks that i have met i have met some very nice folks uh from this community but i've also encountered several other folks that just it's a very toxic you know this was the high point of my life kind of thing uh, i'm i'm the best kind of situation and looking at some of these records like i've never dug into this stuff because i've never really been a high score kind of guy i've always been just more like play the games for the experience of playing them and um boy looking at this guy's list of records like they're they're physically impossible and it's it's hysterical this um um google docs sheet that i downloaded from reddit uh that somebody compiled all of his scores and some of the notes next to him are hysterical like i'm looking at um uh, Fathom for Atari 2600. 
the current high score, the second place high score is 142. And uh, Todd claims to have scored 1,110,500 points. <laughs> What? Come the, on. The proven score of 142 took approximately two and a half minutes. So the world record estimate would be 325 plus hours of playing the game. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. No, that, uh, the, one, that one I don't think is actually up to, for dispute. That one seems legit. Yeah, very it's so much. Close. Very much so. It's so it's close. So close. It's spot on. And like you're looking at the Grand Prix game one, uh, you know, they claimed he got 29.47. The second uh, second place is 29.61. And it's got a note next to it is is a uh, world record disputed for being impossible. <laughs> and there's a lot of them that are just no, th- this is actually impossible. Like a uh, sub scan Atari 2600 uh, second place score 70,500 uh, Todd's score 1 million 12,000. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Wait, just an even one million twelve thousand. Yep, one million twelve thousand. Uh, a lot of things that I was hearing about this, just just from other you know friends in the community and things and other podcasts and whatnot, that uh, some of the scores that he had acquired uh, were impossible even to get in the game because the scores would go in like an increment of I don't know fifty to a hundred, but he would have a score that would somehow land on like a seventy or something like that. So. Mm-hmm. Even in like the way the game would keep score, you never could even land on an increment of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fake news. It's actual, actual, fake actual, news. actual fake news yeah. for once. Oh my god, <laughs> we can actually use that term for once. Yeah. These. Uh, let's see. Todd, I, I, I only s- score a million points, Rogers. Yeah. I would. I, mean, these are, I would like these to are invite ad- him onto the show. He's not going to fucking listen. Yeah, Todd. No, I, oh, Todd. I'm sure he's getting a million offers to be on oh, yeah. every every retro podcast under the sun to like clear his name. We will be the only name. ones worth doing that. Well, clearly. Chris is clearly Man. worth doing. Oh, it's um, clearly. Just Man, looking at like, all of us. Even Anyone that finds got... an Arrow Fighters complete in the box in that condition <laughs> deserves to have Todd Rogers on. Right. I'm never, you don't know what I'm he never letting that go. It. You don't know what he had to do for it, though. That's the thing. We don't talk about. He does. It. He does know what I had to do for it. <laughs> I do. I do. I knew the whole story. Still jealous. Still I see. I, I, he, he's got records all over the place. Like all over the place. He's got uh, pinball games. Freddy and Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, the second place score fifty nine million nine fifty three four twenty. He's got three ninety six million three sixty six eight. <sighs> what? Right. Right. Uh, he's even got Turbo Graphic sixteen world records. Uh, you know, JJ and Jeff, he uh, marked down that he's got 99,999,990 points, world record being disputed for being impossible. <laughs> that Same game thing sucks anyway. Why would you play I was that? Say, I mean, that one, that one I'm actually going to give him a little bit of uh, a, a, a longer leash on because, like, I don't know that anybody's really ever played that game to completion to see <laughs> Seriously. it. Seriously. I can't, I can't dispute that. But yeah. this is I, I, one of the articles that I was reading about this had a really valid point about how um, it's such a good thing that these scores are being removed uh, because the, the thing about it is, is that new people that want to get involved in this, that want to try to go for world records, this, other, this stuff is really demoralizing. Like right. if you go there and you try to get a world record, and you think, "Oh, I did really well at this game. I got the the I beat the second place score in Jungle Hunt for Atari for seventy three thousand points." Like I feel really good, except I'll never reach first place because it's eight hundred and fifty one thousand five hundred points. Not realizing that, well, that's actually impossible. That didn't actually happen. This is just some numbers this dude came up with, and that's 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 terrible. And now that these things are being repealed, and there's all these you know uh, tool assisted runs that are being applied to kind of help figure out what it is that can be done in these games. Now it's kind of cool to see where that stuff goes. Well, uh, wasn't it also with, um, with Billy Mitchell didn't, wasn't something pulled like Donkey Kong was his big claim to fame, but Mm -hmm. recently he was clearly using an emulator or something. I saw a bunch of articles about this. Yes. Uh, so, so this, this eventually led to this whole thing led to the, looking into a lot of other world records. And one of the most prolific world record holders is uh, Billy Mitchell, who is an, an interesting cat to say the least. Um, 
his uh, th- this article that I actually I, I have a link to. I'll put it in the show notes. Is um, it shows some gifts of what it was that proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that uh, he was not using an arcade cabinet, but he was using MAME. Uh, because the MAME version of Donkey Kong loads slightly differently than the arcade version. The um, the stages themselves uh, kind of load up piece by piece. Like there's a GIF on here that's showing MAME loading up the the last stage in Donkey Kong where um, you have to like you know knock down the little girder things and knock donkey kong all the way down to the floor the ladders show up before everything else and then everything else just you know appears piece by piece whereas the original arcade game there's kind of a a cascading uh, swiping effect going on from left to right Mm -hmm. and you can see in billy mitchell's video that they slowed down it loading like the mame cabinet all right sorry made not mame cabinet like like the mame just the mame emulator yes exactly and what that means is that now mame has a tool that allows you to keep replaying things and then it just basically puts it together as if it was a one seamless run. And so there's absolutely no, there's no way to prove that he didn't do this. And considering, you know, he got his high scores and has never done it live. It's pretty, even the implication that he could have done this is like, you got to be kidding me with this stuff. Like if you, (laughs) there's no way to prove that he didn't uh, edit the thing. And right. Well, wasn't it that he got his high scores back in the day with Twin Galaxies, but you know later on the video he he redid it you know yeah through video that is that like exactly King of, what it was King right of Kong uh, yeah, right like the, when King Kong came out his records came under dispute and he showed off uh, you know sending that video in King of Kong where there was a couple of sketchy things with the video uh, but how they still accepted ago, it because he was, was Billy Mitchell how long ago was that that was probably over ten years ago now I would say right like oh six oh seven was King of Kong holy crap really. Was, was it? it that long ago? I think it was because you it might was a be while right. Ago. Just I've lost track of time. The King of Kong, two thousand seven. Holy crap! Yeah, that's what <laughs> I was thinking because I just I remember the band that I was playing in at the time. Oh my! Because I used to play music before I did the Square Painter stuff. Anyway, yeah, uh, me and one of the other guys in the band were into retro games, and I remember him showing me King of Kong. Crazy! I really like, like that movie. Um, oh yeah, and, and uh, you know. That that rubbed me the wrong way, and like even you know creative editing aside, like th- there was some some pretty damning stuff. It, it, that that whole vi- thing in the, in the video in King of Kong where they showed his score roll, where there was like this little break in the video kind of thing, when uh, that 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 always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And finding out that Billy Mitchell did in fact cheat uh, is like, well, I mean, I guess it, it just kind of is what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, We've we've interviewed him before. Um, we did an interview with him at um, I think it was too many games. Um, might have been too yeah. It must have been too many games. It was a couple of years ago. Uh, Geek had interviewed him, and he was you know he's he's a bit standoffish, but he was he he, he was exactly that kind of personality that we were talking about. Like you know he he's very very um, assertive. Uh, what's the word? Uh, confident and borderlining on arrogance and it's oh like, i would say i i'm i'm sorry to interject but i i met him that year that he was there mm-hmm. arrogant and rude and i went up just to shake his hand and he like was like did this whole presiding type thing like i should be happy to meet him like dude are you fucking serious don't don't do that so he, he, he definitely like, has a very high opinion of himself and his celebrity I, Which I really huge turn off. I, I shook yeah. his hand and I was like, "All right, we're done here. I, I want nothing to do with you." And that was ever since then. I, I've never liked the guy. Which isn't to say he's not capable of being nice. Like yeah, he's not straight I, up super villain, uh-huh. but he's he definitely rubbed me the wrong way. Like when we met him, and he's a weird cat. And now knowing that he's been lying about his uh, his game scores for this sense of celebrity that he's clearly very very proud of this persona that he has Jeez, um, that's awful yeah it's 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 uh i mean i guess it's kind of exciting for some people who've always painted him as a super villain um it's I, can you imagine being billy mitchell no 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 <laughs> i could not never no absolutely not Building his entire like this whole persona on being like this this 
and House of Cards. I don't want to also don't want to take away from the fact like Billy Mitchell's really freaking good at Donkey Kong. Okay, like I watched him play the game when we were at too many games. So like, holy crap! Like I can't do what he's doing. I can't do that. That's it's awesome. a very hard game. It is a very hard game. I'm not great at it, and I'm, I'm I don't want to say that Billy Mitchell is not really freaking good at Donkey Kong because he is. But this whole world record thing, this whole this whole business is just ridiculous. Like. To to want that so badly and uh, badly enough to cheat and just lie about it in a freaking movie, no less. Like King of Kong happened, and now you look back at that like, holy crap, he's as bad as that movie made him out to look. Cause yeah, yeah, they definitely made him out to be the bad guy. <laughs> they did, and it's just such a nothing thing. Like, and I don't mean to disparage it, and I know that sounds very harsh, but like we are just talking about a video game. And we're talking about retro arcade games like like it's not the like, Olympics. Yeah, like, but, but like at the end of the day, you know, it it's it's kind of a sad commentary on like, of if 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 your life is devoid of purpose to a point, and this is what you have to define it, then you are going to do whatever you can to, um, maintain that level of of nonsense that you have there, but like, I don't know, go like, go read to underprivileged children. <laughs> you know, like, make a difference in the world. Like, buy a homeless dude a shirt. <laughs> like, fucking, you know what I mean? Like, like, contribute to society. Like, you know, I mean, I know we do this video game podcast and we do take this shit very, very seriously, but like, you can't have your life be defined. Like, I think, I think what's good about this coming out now is that it can serve as a message to people who get so wrapped up in in these sorts of things. And, like, you know, Adam, kind of like what you're saying with the emulate the shit out of this. Like, uh-huh. don't give in to this mythology and, and aura that has been built up around this shit. Like, you don't have to pay that much money to play Little Samson. Exactly. You, you just go play Little Samson. Like, it's good, but it, it's not that good. I, I you know? No, I, I feel like... A lot of these mentalities are kind of a product of the times in that back in the early 80s when the arcade scene was really going on and Twin Galaxies first came up, that these guys, this collective of guys became like this whole boys club type thing of these elite like arcade players. And it, w- it was just very much a thing that happened back then of these guys like being immortalized of, of how good they were and being like deities in the arcade scene and they need to carry on that (laughs) legacy and also with it being now a product of the times of how expensive these video games are that these newer collectors that are getting into things need to have like a little samson to have that be like their trophy piece to show that they're a true collector that they were you know they wanted to spend a thousand dollars on a video game to show that they truly are an NES collector and really care about it. So that that's how how like I kind of look at this. Yeah, and it, and it shouldn't be made, because like no, it should not at all. And it, no, it drives me absolutely now, crazy. If you look at the people who have since trounced both Steve Wiebe and uh, to, to, I'll go back to that in a second. But the people who have since trounced the records that uh, Billy, even Billy Mitchell, and yeah, Steve he's at like set, what fifteenth or sixteenth place or something like that. I don't even. Yeah, think ever since that movie anymore. came out, yeah, other right. people were like, "Of All course, right, well, I'll, well, there I'll was a hype this. train about that, and then especially yeah. around then, oh six, oh seven was when retro gaming was exploding. So mm-hmm. you had that coupled with King of Kong coming out, that you had all these other people coming in to try to beat these scores, and those people aren't like. Billy Mitchell. And that was one of the things in watching King of Kong. One of the reasons I, I, I liked Steve so much in that was that I related to him because he wasn't doing it for the fame or, or anything like that. He wasn't going for this weird glory of wanting to have his name on the top of the leaderboard immortalized in the Guinness Book of World Records or anything. He's like, yeah, I can do this. I want to do right. this. I want to mm-hmm. figure out if I can do this. And that's what, you know, you watching you watch a really good speedrunner or something when some a speedrunner finally breaks a uh, breaks a, their record or a world record on something right. the the elation that comes from something like that that's what this should be about and when it is about that it's so amazing it it's is but so I, cool but i also i i see a lot of like the speedrunner stuff right now there there is a culture of elitism in in that too and i guess there will be in anything of this like core group of like speedrunners that are like fantastic of things that are setting all these records and 
I hope there's nothing going on like this of people fudging their times or anything, but there will always be this, you know, bubble of elitism when, whenever there's a scene of these things going on. Yeah, and that, that that that's the part that I really I really dislike. And, of course, and seeing yeah, these, they're, they're games. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be fun. Exactly. It's, that is the, co- at the its core. It's fun game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about like, that? And when it's done, for when, when things like speed running and and you know any of this like crazy boundary breaking and just figuring out what what makes a game tick and figuring out like how can I shave a couple of seconds off of this to, out of the love of those games, well, you can tell the difference between someone who's doing this kind of stuff. And my earlier comment about saying that it's not the Olympics, I I feel like that that came off the wrong way because clearly I and you guys love video games t- to the very the core of our existences like i yeah, i adore games it's small we've of- done this for the last 188 <laughs> weeks in a fucking row also yeah, by like, as a quick aside i am a total olympic slut and i'm really excited about the olympics starting oh this me week. too um, oh, i'm God, super stoked for the wait. olympics Skeleton? when is it Fuck when yeah. is it thursday is it the- what the and, and what olympics wait what the winter olympics <laughs> oh the winter Gen. olympics are this yeah. year oh i had no yeah, idea thursday oh holy lord how about that and- North yeah, Korea and South Korea are fielding a joined team. Get out, really? That's the yep. only good thing the president They're acknowledging has done. that of uh, their existence to each other? Yeah, like North Korean athletes flew to Pyeongchang. At- what? Yeah. What? Yeah. I had no idea. You That's gotta get incredible. You, you got to get your head out of the brushes for a minute, man. <laughs> Seriously, I got to stop making stupid on. videos about King of Dragons and EVO Search for Eden. <laughs> I mean, wow. I'm trying to pay some bills and whatnot, but no, this is a big I, deal. I, I, no, that, that is a huge deal. And I yeah. said Pyeongyang, which is it's not Pyongyang. It's Pyongyang. I'm a fucking right. asshole. I am also very tired. Right. But, I, I called a, a stegosaurus a sterosaurus in my in my very own. Oh man, those I, I called that was myself hysterical. on it. You thought that was funny? Yeah, I, I said stegosaurus. I, I went it was, back. It was a couple of like there was like two, maybe three of those little like flubs that you did. And I'd looked at this, and I was looking at the screen because I was lis- listening and watching at the same time while I was doing dishes when I was like uh, watching the video. And I'd like look at it and be like, "Wait, did he just say and rewind it for a second? You'd like put on the screen? Yeah, that's not a thing. <laughs> no, like that. that's not a thing, dude. I just I. I'm talking to a camera, and I'm just ranting about a game, and I'm trying to be like my square painter persona on camera. It's very difficult to. Well, I keep know what it is. That's thoughts, why I stopped like, doing. Keep, yeah, it's I, hard. I, I used to do into the vault videos where I just pick random stuff from my collection and talk about them. I stopped doing it because it's. I, 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 I'm not entertaining like that. I'd, well, I'd watch oh, thank the you for like, thinking I'm entertaining because I just I would I would have all my thoughts in my head. I don't have a checklist in front of me or anything like that. It's like three, two, one, and go. I don't have yeah. my phone next to me. I don't have anything. I just pick up the game. I have my things in my head, and I just rant and I cut it up. Anyway, Billy Mitchell. Yeah. So what a dick. <laughs> Good, wow, what a dick. <laughs> what I was saying before is I I, I didn't mean to kind of disparage that. Um, saying that this isn't the olympics because i do think that there's you know competitive gaming is it's it's a very different kind of skill and i have been as excited as completely fascinated watching like in evo finals of street fighter 4 as i have watching like uh, you know an, an olympic match where a, a record is broken or something like that there is there is a hundred percent i believe that there is just the same type of dedication and crazy skill it's just a different kind of skill you know what i mean like oh absolutely Olympic, i would agree uh, pro, watching pro gamers do things like watching the smash brothers pros work their work their games it's like i i can't even follow it sometimes it's like you know when they're in dragon ball when the people are on the side it's like i couldn't follow that attack like that's what happens to me when i'm watching some of these things like i just can't i just can't follow it and it's fascinating to me it really is but but there's there even is, a difference like if you look at those game, like you watch an evo tournament and those guys are very dedicated and are very serious about what they're doing, but they're still having fun. You they watch are, a yeah. StarCraft tournament or a fucking Halo tournament, there's a lot less fun being had. That's true. In yeah. my oh, experience. S- StarCraft, oh wrong. man. A StarCraft was like the only like uh, strategy game that I, I played back in the day that I was honestly any any good at. And even when I started getting good at that game, it didn't become fun anymore just because 
even if you missed out on like a microsecond of doing something, you you were done. Like the other yeah, guy was going to take it, you out, and it, it just was fun not fun anymore. for me. No, it wasn't. You know, it it becomes this robotic, repetitive very much yep. thing. You you almost become like a living algorithm, and that's not fun. At no, all. I would I, I would I, never I don't want, want to say that it's not fu- it's not fun for me. I mean, if it's possible that that's fun for other people, though, it's I don't not, want to though. say that it's. <laughs> it's I, not, I, I can't I say for say sure. I'm care. not those other I'll, people. No, I mean, I I agree. Like, hey, to, to each his own, but. Uh, that that is not fun for me either. O- honestly, for me, speed running is something that I I think is fascinating to watch, but it's something that I would never ever even think to attempt or want to because a, a game that I love like Ninja Gaiden, I-, I I would love to get to the point of getting through that game of doing a no hit no death run, and I I'm pretty damn good at Ninja Gaiden, and if I really practiced, I can get to that point. But I don't know if I want to do that and get to that point. Because it would ruin the game for me of like really having to break down every nuance of it. It would mm-hmm. ruin like the magic of the game for me. I was doing that with Punch Out for a while. I was figuring out uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out on ES. I was just mathematically breaking that game down of exactly how to react to everything. And it got to a point where I was like, well, I'm not actually playing the game anymore now. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm performing the game. And that's uh, that's just right. kind of a different experience for me. And if I if I kept working at it, I probably could have gotten to you know t- to that kind of point if I really really hammered at home. But at that point, it kind of stopped being fun. And right. that that's that's what we're talking about. But there's there's one whole thing. All right, odd tangent here just for that. Do you guys remember the Adventures of Pete and Pete? Uh-huh. Of course. Yeah, there's uh, the one uh, episode with the guy Inspector Thirty Four, the the underwear inspector, where he does everything perfect. Yep, mm-hmm. he eats the the barbecue. Yep, and he like stacks the bones. Uh, there's one thing where there's a whole commentary on that, where all the kids in the neighborhood would play kick the can, and they it was just you know it's a kids game that you play in the street. But he broke it down to be so nuanced to that they were literally sitting there writing out statistics on a sheet to <laughs> figuring out who would win in kick the can. And when I watched that, I was almost like, yeah, I like speed running and all this and all, but that's essentially what you're doing when you're breaking down a game that you love. You're, you're, you know, it's a game that you're, that's so much fun that you love, you love what it is, but you're just, you're breaking it down to like rote numbers and arithmetic. And does that make it fun? And to a certain extent, I can see that that, that digging into it can be fun. Like um, Ferg, actually, we were talking about earlier, he posted this really fascinating article, and I don't even remember wh- what it was related to, but he posted it in a comment on Facebook, and it was about this guy who quote-unquote fixed E.T. Uh, for Atari. <laughs> E.T. And is not that bad. It's it's not a great game, but it's playable. It anyway. is, but, and that's what that, that's what his, his whole purpose was of this article. It's like, E.T.'s not a bad game. It's got a few fatal flaws. And so he fixed things like the the collision detection isn't actually the problem. It's that, like, he compared the E.T. to, uh, yeah, like, he compared it to the way The Legend of Zelda works because it's basically the same perspective. And when you're Link, you can walk up to an object and it doesn't collide with him until it's about halfway down his body because it's really colliding with the bottom part of him, like his feet. And that's the thing with E.T. When you walk by a hole and your head hits the hole, you fall down. So he fixed that in the programming. He made a, he made a version of the game that fixes things like E.T.'s not green anymore because he's not green in the movie. Turn him into brown, you know, like like he matches the color right. in the movie. They changed the hit detection so that basically you can walk past the pits and it's not until like more than halfway down E.T.'s body. If that's the part that touches the hole, that's when you fall in. So the so hit box it, was changed. It, exactly. The hit box has changed. Like, a lot of little things like that. And I thought that was a really fascinating story. And reading this article, the guy dug into it and broke it down piece by piece. Like, all right, how does this game work? What made these things happen so that I can figure out if I can fix them? And I can see how that kind of teardown can be a really fascinating and fun thing to look at. Like this neat little peek behind the curtain of what makes this game that I love tick. Of course. But right, but when he we're didn't getting... do that to say that he was better than somebody. Exactly, right. and, and that right that that, that sums it up right there. Exactly, that's the difference between this group of people, particularly um, uh, uh, Todd Rogers and Billy Mitchell. I f- I think that their main reason for doing these things was to be able to say that they were better than other people. Exactly, and that brings me back to my point before of this whole elitist culture in the late seventies, early eighties of these like 
arcade gurus and they had to be like the best and the, they were held in such high esteem because like our, the arcade scene exploded back then and you know that's their their one claim to fame and Dan you were saying that before if, like that's the one thing you're clinging to that's that's really pathetic and it it is the one thing that they're clinging to and it, it really yeah, sucks that like, they it is sad I feel bad for him you know like that it because it's it's not to say like you know like Chris was saying like obviously we love this stuff and we you know that there's you know, we, we spend a fair amount of time and, and get into heated arguments and discussions about Of shit, course. But, like, but it's, like, the same thing. Like, I'm sure you guys, like, had visited a comic shop at one point where where some dudes were having an argument about who would win in a fight between, like, Superman and Thor. Shut. Stop it. <laughs> but those are you? always, those were always, like, in, like, I guess if they were fun to discuss and, like, break things down. Right, and but to no, say but, yeah, why, but when but it got to the still, point where people weren't having fun with that, exactly. Argument anymore, when it got mm-hmm. to the point when it was like heated, then like, all right, guys, come on. Like, what, when it got to the on, point guys. where DC fans are review bombing Black Panther because they hate Marvel or yeah, other like, reasons. No, I thought uh, that was for different reasons. But we're, yeah. we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about political and social motivations of things, right? <laughs> not 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 at the moment. No. <laughs> okay. No. No. Okay. <laughs> that it will be a whole other tangent. <laughs> yeah. I heard Black. Uh, I heard Black Panther was awesome though. I can't wait to see it. No, yeah, I can't looks, wait to see that movie. It, it, it looks, looks ridiculous. great. It, it looks really cool. <laughs> and the Tolkien white guy joke is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Yeah. The uh, have, you, have you heard this, the, the Tolkien white guy joke? No. Is, is original... Tom Arnold involved? Because Tom Arnold, you know, he was like the token white guy in like all the DMX movies. No, it's, it's okay, the, anyway. two, the two white people in the movie are um, uh, Bilbo Baggins and Gollum. They're the Tolkien white guys. Oh, Tolkien! Ah, <laughs> how silly! You got me. I, I I can't take credit for that joke, but I I, fe- I saw it online and I could not stop laughing. That is uh-huh. freaking genius! <laughs> oh boy, God! I'm looking at this Todd Rogers page again. I'm looking at Journey Escape for Atari 2600, which we've talked about on the show before. Is my that guilty pleasure fun. game? Yeah, I, had I that love when I was Journey a kid. Escape, it's fun. man. <laughs> And the proven second place record of four million three hundred seventeen eight hundred four points was approximately four hours and twenty minutes. I cannot imagine playing that game for four hours and twenty minutes. I can't imagine playing that game for more than one. Any hour. any Atari game for four <laughs> hours, like th- those are like bite size crazy. fifteen twenty yeah. minute playthroughs. Well, this guy's world record. That no longer exists with one hundred and five million seven hundred seventy nine six hundred five points, and uh, that would have approximately that would have estimated taken a hundred and six hours solid of journey escape. And that was uh, what the the uh, dragster Todd Todd Rogers <coughs> that, guy. Yeah, that was the dragster guy. Oh, jeez. So okay, so. I'm just, just to be trying clear. to wrap my head around 106 hours of Journey, like the just 106 hours of the music of Journey Escape. With Wasn't it like four notes repeating over and over or something like, like that? Just, I remember yeah. it being really annoying. Uh, <laughs> that, that's one I, I very much remember from when I was a kid. I remember it had annoying music. Anyway, so where is it at now with this Todd Rogers guy? Have all of these insane um, scores that you clearly cannot get have they all been removed from twin galaxies i believe, so, or? Yes. Yep. I believe okay. twin galaxies has removed todd rod all of todd's scores and has banned him from submitting new scores oh wow is is uh what's his name i met him oh, fuck. walter day is he still the the no. guy like the main no, guy he's no? not okay no he sold twins galaxies which is a part of why this is all happening because okay you know I don't. I don't know how Walter Day would have reacted to this stuff because I know he cared a lot about this, but I think he was also pretty enamored by that boys club. You know what I mean? Oh, very much. Well, did, wasn't he oh, the one that started that? Him. Yeah, and he right. yeah he was the one that was was accepted Billy Mitchell's score in King of Kong because uh, it was Billy Mitchell. Right, right, right. So, so the, uh, there were there were a lot of <coughs> factors uh, going on going yeah. on there with with a lot of these things crazy that this is like there's so much drama surrounding this um but i'm really glad that it's i'm glad that it is coming to light no no absolutely in the the gaming community this honestly needs to especially with competitive um you know speed running gaming and things like that that just to show that this will not be allowed to to uh, to set a standard here that you cannot do this that uh, cheaters 
or liars, thieves, anything, you will be called out. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy about that. I'm sad that this has happened and that this has been the standard for so long that Mm -hmm. these scores have have been in place forever. And we have the tools now to prove this kind of stuff. But it's like, man, this is a – it's – in the road of legitimizing video games, which I guess really isn't as much of a thing anymore, you know, that I remember for the longest time, uh, video games were just kind of frowned upon by other entertainment medium fans. Oh, of course, for, for and, years. The, the, I think video games didn't really get legitimized in the mainstream until I would say Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare was the one that really did it with, uh, with the mu- multiplayer of how that broke yeah. everything open. 10, 12 years ago, then it started being looked at in a different way. Maybe even yeah. Halo, but Modern Warfare, I think, was the one game that really was the one that split it open. Yeah, and now you're getting, like, celebrities doing voice work in games like oh, of that. Of course, yeah. It's, it, it, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's funny, I haven't even thought about this until this yeah, well, moment for well, a long time. Yeah, well, unfortunately, Kevin Spacey, he, he wasn't he like the antagonist in one of the call of duty games he was like some oh, corporate wow i think he, you're right he he was like wasn't the story that he was uh, head of some corporation that was like some military conglomerate and essentially was providing weapons to the government and then he like was like pretty much bought out the united states government and like it was corporation controlled or something like that it sounds like right. something out of a william gibson novel but wasn't that I think that was a story from Call of Duty. Anyway. I feel like I remember Kevin Spacey being involved in one of those, but I yeah, he, I, he, I know cannot. he definitely was. But anyway, I can't speak to that. I've never really spent any time with Call of Duty. I don't, it's uh, not, my, not my jam. I don't know who this person is that you speak of. I've never heard that name before. It's been not me neither. Ka- Ka- Kaiser Soze. He just you know like like that. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> <sighs> Profound sadness. It is anyway. <laughs> Well, I guess that's it. I, I, I've, I feel that we've exhausted the topic. I'm, you know, I'm glad things are coming to light. I'm glad that people are aren't going to be so turned off to try to accomplish high scores since there's no longer impossible to get high scores uh, sitting in place. I'm sad that uh, this Todd Rogers guy got away with it for so long, and I mean, really, the universe at large, I, I'm sure, doesn't actually care. Like you really ask the ask the average person who her person who Billy Mitchell is and they don't know. And that that's no, kind of but, the big that's kind of the big joke of all of it. Like no no it, it is and it isn't because uh, a lot of people on the outside don't care, but us there's a lot of us. There's there's many many of us thousands upon thousands of us that do care that are in this. So it, it does matter. It does matter. Yeah, to us. I don't even. I don't remember where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> right here, I've derailed. I, we, we, I was going right here. You're right, Dan. You were going, going to the right point here. where you say, "And that's our show." And that's our show. <laughs> You're right. That that is our show. Uh, th- thank you, Adam, again for coming on. Uh, Anytime, really man. It's always it. a blast talking with you guys. Loved, love shooting the shooting the shit on on video games with you. Of course. Uh, so let's see. Join us next week where we're going to continue our creators' month with a visit from a YouTube creator who goes by the name Poop Poop Fart. We'll be talking about how he creates his videos, <laughs> what games he likes to play, and I'm going to ask him about his name because I'm genuinely curious. Um, he is a he he makes YouTube music videos that have impressed me uh, just beyond. I'm going to I'm going to check out Poop Poop Fart as soon as we uh we wrap this up. You know what I love about this guy? His uh, his, his he went name? to go his, his beside name is his poop, name poop, Fart. Well, that's wonderful, but on top of that, he went to go uh create a Twitter account and it turns out Poop Poop Fart was already taken, so his Twitter account is Crap Crap Toot. <laughs> <laughs> I love this man. <laughs> I'm really excited to talk to him and 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 talk about his like I'm going to get it's going to get nerdy. Because uh, I, I, well, I, I know imagine. nothing about the guy, really. Almost nothing about him. I've seen one video where he actually talks, uh, and he portrayed himself as a puppet. So, <laughs> just, oh, he's one of those. Good. He's elusive. You just—he's a voice. I—I I don't know. I really don't. Um, but it's—it's uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun to chat with him. I, uh-huh. I, I hope it goes well. Um, so that's next week. It's gonna be super fun. So um, 
Once again, you can get in touch with us at mail at com, as well as all flavors of social media that we inhabit. You can uh, like us on Facebook, find us on Instagram at Geekade, subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels for all our latest video content, follow us on Twitter at the underscore Geekade, find us individually on Twitter, I'm at Geekade Chris, that's Geekade K-R-I-S, and Dan is at... At Geekade Dan. And Adam, you are on the Twitters. You are at I am. I actually I was lucky to get Square Painter on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. All wow, four. Yeah, I got a royal uh, not a royal flush, it was a four of a kind on that. Yeah, I got a four <laughs> of a kind on that. So please uh check me out on any of those uh social media platforms. Especially on YouTube. I'm gonna be putting out a lot of uh, uh more YouTube uh video content. And he's an attractive man, so he's worth looking at. Oh shush. <laughs> If you're interested in more information about anything we discussed here tonight, be sure to check out our show notes. And while you're at it, you can also subscribe to this and any of our other wonderful podcasts on iTunes or Stitcher, where if you're super nice, you can leave us a review because any and all feedback is welcome and appreciated. We'd also like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making the show listenable for all you folks. And he's back. Uh, we'd also like to thank Mark TDK Knight for our show's theme. You can check him out on SoundCloud and Bandcamp or his website, which we'll have a link to in the show notes. Again, always remember to keep your eyes on geekade.com for even more fresh original content. Content. One more time, Adam. It has been a pleasure. You are always welcome to come on the show. I'm looking forward to having you and, and, and Nina on again for some trivia. Um, I, yes. I forgot to mention yes. at the top of the show. I, I was bummed Nina couldn't come. She had a, a work thing or something. It was supposed yeah, to be yeah. She she had a whole work thing with because uh, <laughs> uh, we live in Philadelphia again, and uh, schedules have kind of gotten messed up because uh, there, there's that thing called the Philadelphia Eagles, and they they won the, <laughs> the, the, the sports ball bowl. <laughs> and uh, they're, they're, they're throwing a parade for him on Thursday, so all the businesses are going to be closed. So oh. Nina has to put in all this time at her job. She's a, a math technician at a, at a company, so she has to kind of catch up on all that because they're going to be closed on Thursday, I think Friday also. So, Thoughts? Yeah, kind of sucks, but got to do what at you got to do. At least the Patriots didn't win. <laughs> I thought it was the Vikings that it was. I don't even know. You know that what? Was, that was two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You know what? Why did I even say that? I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. I don't think right now you're allowed to be in Philly and admit that you don't like. Seriously, I, I'm waiting for like the hatchets to come through my door and like me to get thrown out the window. Uh, there's motherfuckers standing outside right now. They're like, I'm gonna let you torches, finish, dude. No, I'm, I'm gonna let, let you finish, finish that show, and you're gonna die. Funny, but then you're dead. Like, yeah. This, <laughs> It's over. West West Philly wasn't so crazy the other night. It was it was just like I said, a lot of a lot of yelling and screaming in the street and fireworks and cars honking. No no like, you know, telephone poles getting ripped out of the ground. <laughs> was I mean I'm I'm blanking on the actual lyrics, but was that why uh Fresh Prince had to go moving with Uncle Phil? Like Uh if you wanna know a secret? I've never sure. seen a full episode of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Never have. But in, but in the opening, you've seen the opening sequence. Was it in no. West Philadelphia, born and in raised? West or? Philadelphia, yes. born and yes. raised. All right, yeah, it was West Philadelphia. On okay. the playground, Chris, is where he spent most of his days. Chilling he out, Max, and He would be chilling out, Max, and relaxing all cool, and shooting b-ball outside of the I, school. I love Will Smith. I think he's fantastic, but I uh, Except never Except his have... dead shot. Other than that. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, what was that in uh, that... Suicide uh, Squad? Well, that movie doesn't exist because no. you know even the trailer was so bad. God, I did not. I did not care to see that. He movie. had to have damage tattooed on his head to show people that he was damaged. Get it? You get it? You get it? It was right there because the he was Joker. He's yeah. the Joker. Yeah, you get it. That's why. Because no. if you know Just, if you're fucked up and crazy, you clearly get <laughs> fucked up and crazy tattooed on your head. To real, prove real, it. Real quick. My wife explained it to me because I, I didn't understand what the fuck they were going for in that movie. And she explained it. When the original Batman comics were created, the Joker was a gangster. And in this modern universe, he is still a gangster. Just what he would be if a gangster developed to death. All and right. Went, fuck. You're right. And now it's worse. <laughs> I guess. I mean, to me, it, Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson is the is, will always be the Joker to me. Oh, it's the, without question. Yeah, even though Heath Ledger's Joker was amazing, but mm -hmm. Jack Nicholson. Different. Uh, I, I, I just rewatched. Such a different take. We can I, oh, argue I that point on another. Show. No, I I rewatched. I know that could be a whole thing. I rewatched like the uh, the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy, and my God, 
I like I liked those movies when they came out. Holy shit, are they good? They're really good. Like I haven't really rewatched good. the third one in a long time. Oh, see, no, I, I was had, gonna go the opposite, dude. Batman I Begins. Love them. I didn't like Batman Begins when it first came out because they're all on Netflix now. Oh my god, Batman Begins is so so good. It is. I, I recently Neeson. rewatched those two. And no, because I, well, I didn't no like such it. thing as enough Liam Neeson. Come no, on, that's not a fair thing to say. The, the big <laughs> thing that the big thing I didn't like was that it wasn't there wasn't a stereo like one of the big villains. There wasn't the Riddler or the Penguin or something like that. Who the fuck is Ra's al Ghul? I didn't read the comics. I didn't know, <laughs> but I went into it with like an open mind of it being just its own thing. And god damn, is that movie good? All right, I'm I'm calling time out, or else we're gonna. This is all right. That's this true. Will become yeah, a, we almost a whole, a whole thing. podcast. Uh, it's a whole thing. I, I I'm not I'm not a comic fan <laughs> whatsoever, but I do love Batman. Uh, but more from the movies, so I understand that. Well, with that, that's it, everybody. That's Thank now you our for show. Listening. That's that now our show. Up. All right. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Dan. Keep playing games. <laughs>